kids, this is Miss Amanda, and we're going to continue our lessons on the Ten Commandments today. One of the ways that we try to remember the Ten Commandments is by using road signs. And we use road signs because they kind of act like real road signs in life. Real road signs in life tell us where we need to go. And the Ten Commandments are the same way for us. They help remind us of the direction that God wants us to go so that we can live a godly life. So, the first commandment is... What helps us remember that is First Street. And that is with that we keep God first in our life. Real God Road. Real God Road helps us to remember that we do not have any idols in our life. We worship God only. Name Lane. Name Lane helps us to remember that we do not misuse God's name, but we use his name respectfully. Sabbath Street. That helps us to remember that we have a day of the week where we have it set aside to worship God, maybe with others, with special times of prayer and song and things like that. Next commandment is Parent Parkway. We use this to remember it by how we honor our parents and we respect them and in that way we can show them love. And then today's road sign is No Pain Lane, and that comes from the Sixth Commandment that talks about how we do not murder. Now you may think, I've never murdered anybody or felt like I'm going to murder anyone, but we all have times in our life where our anger has led us to sin, and so we're going to be talking a little bit about that today. But first, let's go ahead, we have some friends who have sent some videos helping us to answer the question, how can we respond in kindness whenever others make us angry? So let's take some time to listen to them answer that question. Uh, walk away or tell, tell a trusted person. So you don't feed into their anger? Good job. You can say, I don't like it when you do that and I feel mad when you do that. Please stop it. So you can tell them how you feel. Okay. Smile and be happy. Be nice to them. Show them love. You cannot then tell them to stop. So if somebody, if you're playing with somebody, or if you want to play with somebody and they're like, I don't want to play with you. You can ask them. That's okay. But you can still be friends, and then you can go home and play with somebody else. Bye. Okay. Have you okay. met my baby and Sally? I'm a cool man. You can also say Cut. next time. We, how about we make out a deal and by being nice? Um, I think that if someone's being me mean to you, um, you should just say. Hey, can you please I stop? Can and if they don't stop, go tell a parent. Anyway, that's what I have to say. I'm an odd squad agent. Very nice. So how, how's a way that you can respond in kindness even when, when people are being mean? Well, if someone's being mean and you're going to respond in kindness, you can say, like if they say, because you don't know that much, you can say, well, maybe... Maybe I don't know everything you know, but we all are different, and God made us different. Wow, thank you, White House Kids. That's some really good answers. I know it can be hard sometimes to respond with kindness when others make us angry, but that's where we get our big idea today. Our big idea is we don't hurt others. And that's from our Sixth Commandment that we're talking about. So the Sixth Commandment can be found in Exodus 20, 13, and it's just a short verse that says, you must not murder. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that today. While you may not feel tempted to murder, sometimes our anger can lead us to sin, and we can be tempted to hurt others. So we'll talk more about our big idea, we don't hurt others, by looking at a story from Genesis 4 on Cain and Abel. Before we get started talking about that verse, though, those verses, I'd like us to go to talk about our object lesson. So we have a short video to kind of describe to you the setting for our object lesson. Watch that first. 
Hi Lighthouse Kids! This is our object lesson for today. You can see that it includes 10 chairs in a circle and on to the backs of each chair is tied some yarn and connected to the chair across from it. It kind of looks like spokes on a bicycle tire and then in the center on a plate is a Lego structure that Clay made. Now right now that's balanced in the middle but let's see what happens as we continue on with our object lesson. So now that you've been introduced to the object lesson, we're going to have Abel be representing the Lego structure. So the Lego structure in the middle will be Abel, and then the pieces of yarn will be representing every time that Cain is tempted to sin through his anger. So we'll be cutting one of those pieces of yarn every time we read that Cain sins. First, we're going to read Genesis 4, 2 through 4. Later, Eve gave birth to Cain's brother and named him Abel. When they grew up, Abel became a shepherd, while Cain cultivated the ground. When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought a gift, the best of the firstborn lambs from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel and his gift. Here we read how Cain brought some of his crops. We know that in his heart, Cain did, Cain did not bring the best of his crops because it says that the Lord accepted Abel's gift and did not accept Cain's. And so we know that Cain already is sinning in that he's making choices to not give his best to God. And so let's go ahead and go to our yarn structure and let's cut that first piece of yarn. All right, Clay, can you cut your first string? Good job. Did it fall? Yeah. All right. The Lego structure didn't fall, but we're going to go ahead and continue reading on to verse 5. But he did not accept Cain and his gift. This made Cain very angry, and he looked dejected. So now Cain's anger is leading him not just to jealousy, but also anger toward God, and it's leading him to look dejected. Looking dejected just meaning that he was having an attitude that was not godly. So this is another area where we see that Cain's anger is leading him to sin. And so we're going to go ahead and cut another piece of yarn. Okay, Clay, you ready to cut the second string? All right, did it fall? All right, looks like the Lego structure still didn't fall yet. But now we're going to continue to read on 6 through 7. Why are you so angry? The Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at your door, eager to control you. But you must not subdue it and be its master. So we can see here in Scripture that the Lord is warning Cain to not let his anger lead him to sin. But Cain is continuing to have a bad attitude as we continue to read in Scripture. Through this verse, we know that he is continuing to have that bad attitude. He's continuing to sin, and God is warning him. The Lord's warning him, do not choose to let yourself be led to anger. But Cain is not choosing to do that. So we're going to go ahead and cut another piece of yarn. He's continuing to sin in his anger. All right, Clay, you ready to cut your third string? Uh, what is it? Did it fall? Okay, the Lego structure still didn't fall, but let's look at verse 8. One day, Cain suggested to his brother, let's go out to the fields. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. So here we see how Cain's anger has now led him to sin by murdering his brother. And it is not 
a quick thing that he decided to do right away, but his jealousy, his choosing to not give God his best, and Abel giving his best, that jealousy they had, and then also that attitude he chose to have. All those things slowly led that anger to lead him to sin in the way of killing his brother. So let's cut that last thread, that last piece of yarn, and let's see what happens. All right, Clay, you ready to cut your fourth string? So with the cutting of that last piece of yarn, we saw that Abel being represented by that Lego structure had fallen, showing us how Cain, each time we cut one of those pieces of yarn, each time his anger led him to sin, he was getting closer and closer to hurting his brother in a way so severely to choose to end his life. And we don't want to ever even get close to making the kinds of choices that lead us to hurt others in our anger. God talks a little bit about that in Matthew 5, 21 through 22. Let's look at that together. Matthew 5, 21 through 22. You have heard that our ancestors were told, you must not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you are angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot, you are in danger of being brought before the court. And if you curse someone, you are subject to danger of fires of hell. So here we read how our anger is a bigger deal. It is something that can lead us to make choices of sinning. And God is, sees that. He sees that anger. And he wants us to not fall under any of these judgments. He wants us to make choices not just not to murder, but to not be angry. And in our anger, to ask him for help. So that's something you always can do. You can say, God, when you're angry, pray to him. Say, God, please help me in my anger to not sin to not hurt others that I love, whether that might be physically or that might be emotionally by saying words like it said here that could hurt them. So if that's something that you see in your life or maybe you see in someone else's life, pray for yourself, pray for them, and know that God can help you in your anger and help them as well. So let's go ahead and we'll end the lesson today, but I look forward to seeing you next week. And remember parents, you can always find our lessons online by going to yourlbc.com. And then under that children's and nursery tab, there's a lot of good resources that can tell you about the lesson today and then also previous lessons we've had. Well, have a great week and I'll see you next time.